What makes us relate to a story? And what makes us relate so strongly to the people within those stories as if they were real? The desire to tell stories as a way of communicating to the rest of our culture is the tried and true method of forming deep bonds, communities, and even strongest so, families. We tell stories about humanity and about the truth of our humanity. Stories of great triumph. Stories of legendary status. Epic tales like the Iliad and the Odyssey telling us how great mankind can truly be. Humanity is quite a mixed bag though and for every treat inside there's a wicked trick we have bold happy stories but we also have terrifying somber tales grim tellings dark fantasies brought to the surface brought into into reality Yes, I've recently been exploring two stories notoriously decrepit and just as much real as they are surreal, Silent Hill 2 and Crime and Punishment. Their tales wind equivocally like a roller coaster and spin and spin you around but in the prison of your own mind, not just reality, you see. What you see along the way, though? Oh, God. Is it scary? Both stories drag you down and down, further and further, to the bottom. The absolute bottom. And you learn the feel of rock bottom. You learn the sight of rust and blood. You learn the sounds of those people tortured by their own minds. And you learn the smell and the taste. And the thought of murder. But amongst the suffering, we witness through James and Raskolnikov something more, something beyond suffering. They suffer with meaning. They suffer as liminal fuel towards the truth. A succession of numerous pains and sufferings like the pain we all go through. But not in vain, you see. Not in vain. It is precisely that truth that we find in both stories. James and Raskolnikov are both walking alongside us on our journeys to seek the truth. They both were misguided. James suppressed his crimes and Raskolnikov possessed by demented ideology. Just as we all do at times, they sunk down and down into the house of Hades. What our parents never told us, you see, is that once you're there, you bring it back to the surface. In other words, regardless of if hell actually exists for certain wicked people as their afterlife, their torment, ever present, starts well before that. They live through hell on earth, haunted by their crimes until they find the truth. That version of hell 
is exactly what Dostoevsky and Team Silent show us in these two macabre texts. Just like the greatest of stories, these two stories give us a framework for how we can build upon our lives, enriching ourselves with new truth. I want to investigate ways that Silent Hill 2 and Crime and Punishment offer us insight into our own minds. My goal is to find more nuanced perspectives on how crime affects us, how we deliver our own punishment, but how we can deliver ourselves out of that punishment and redeem ourselves. My name is Christian Ashton Garcia, and this is what Silent Hill 2 and Crime and Punishment teach us about redemption. As a preliminary synopsis, Silent Hill 2 is known for taking inspiration from Crime and Punishment. The stories have many parallels, touching on themes of how isolation affects us, hiding from the truth, is murder justifiable, etc. Both protagonists are hiding from their actions and unable to grip with reality after committing murder. Both protagonists had troubles in life, causes for the horrendous acts they performed. They both chose to hide behind their own justifications and excuses. That's ridiculous. I never. And as they find out, the torment of not taking responsibility for their actions has manifested a form of hell to them. James and Raskolnikov both spend most of the time we see them experiencing the aftermath of their dirty deeds. Their punishment. They live in a deep torment. Instead of the thriller of asking who done it, we witness these troubling aftermaths of their murders. And the question is more psychological, asking why done it? We may not all be murderers, but we could be. So, by asking why done it, both stories ask us, the audience, and the player if there are justifications for murder, if we deserve to live after overstepping moral or societal or legal boundaries, and if we would even be successful in trying to live after overstepping and committing atrocities. We all make mistakes and everybody has chosen to cross the line before. Consequently, receiving correction or punishment for our transgressions, however big or small, is a huge part of life. Silent Hill 2 and Crime and Punishment both explore how we respond to the choice of good versus evil. How we respond to whether good and evil even exists. And how any person can become possessed by an extreme ideology in the right conditions. And how devastating such extreme ideologies are. Dostoevsky and Team Silent have only just begun to reveal what kind of real-world context and dark themes they've got in store to the keen eye. What happens when somebody commits murder? Do they suffer for their sins? Either in their secular context or in their religious context? Is punishment necessary? Is punishment even real? That is also to say, is crime real? When we choose to believe it doesn't, that would mean right and wrong don't exist on a fundamental 
primordial level. They exist only superficially because we created them. At that point, even the most vicious acts can be rationalized and justified as the best action. That begs me to explore the question, what happens when you justify murder? Does suffering continue? Or does it disappear because right and wrong don't really exist? Does morality even exist? If not, is legal crime the only reason why crime is thought of as cosmic truth? Even if right and wrong exist, what about a more difficult question? Can crime be committed for moral reasons or even utilitarian reasons? A horrid act may be a legal crime, but who's to say there was moral transgression? A moral crime committed in that scenario. What if there was more to gain as a society from murdering a genocidal ideologue like Hitler? What if there was more to gain as a society from murdering an abhorrent pawnbroker leech? One answer to these questions is very clear. Whomsoever dares to transgress the dark line of crime, their mental health is in grave danger. Illusions, dark fantasies, twisted nightmares, as well as declining physical health seem not too far behind in transgressions such as these. We all have our own experiences, our own transgressions we can use to relate with characters like James and Raskolnikov. Then so, we must ask the ultimate question. Can we be redeemed from our suffering? And how? Everyone has their own way, surely. But I have noted three paths everyone can take at some point. One, they confess their crimes either to their family and loved ones. Two, they confess to the legal system. Or three, to their god, religious deity, or through whatever spiritual lens the individual has. The most integral step towards redemption, though, is to confess to ourselves. Admit our wrongs so that we may understand them and learn from them. Silent Hill 2 and Crime and Punishment both give us insight into our own minds, allowing us to confront the most evil transgressions of life preparing our minds and bodies and souls to defend themselves from the dark arts evil employs to possess us with dangerous ideologies. These more complex themes can be assessed and extracted out of clues Team Silent and Dostoevsky leave us in each story. Let's break down each topic of discussion following the characters and symbols as clues to find powerful motifs so that we can extrapolate each theme better when the time comes. Imagine the dilemma of a painter who's been tasked to recreate the image of the devil, the demons, and the savage monsters all threatening the village. Everyone is turning into mindless vessels for carnage in an effort to save everyone. He accepts the challenge so that his town may know what evil looks like and become better equipped to deal with those threats in the future. That artist must confront the abyss itself in order to understand it. He's afraid. He knows, though, no matter what, he will keep searching for victory. There's 14 million 605 ways he could succumb to evil and perish before he even had the chance to return home. 
But there is also one in which he survives. Finally triumphant, the artist comes back stronger, having outwitted evil itself. He furthers himself spiritually, mentally, and physically, and helps further civilization with his new insight. His village might have the means to grow and invent new technology to keep the monsters from the dark at bay and survive for another millennia. This mindset of looking into the belly of the beast to seek the truth is why Fyodor Dostoevsky and Team Silent would create texts that are so disturbing, yet so insightful. Analyzing both stories has helped me look at problems I may have in my own day-to-day -day life. Instead of suppressing thoughts and memories, I feel urged to grab my paintbrushes like that courageous artist and be willing to stare into the abyss and be willing for it to stare back into me. Is that a dangerous act? Yes, it is. But as Carl Jung thought, individuals become victims of some form of unconscious puppeteering when they choose not to face their own inner abyss. They'll be guided around in life by forces beyond their control, yet paradoxically coming from within their own mind. The degree to which this psycho zombie is affected depends on how little the unconscious mind is explored and understood. Both texts are inherently psychological studies, so they need to be analyzed with a psychological lens on top of the traditional literary lens and narrative lens and gameplay lens for Silent Hill 2. Each analytical lens overlaps with another lens at almost every point of great drama and tension, providing more layers of context into our two protagonists. James Sunderland and Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov. We're going to follow a three-act structure. First, crime. Why did James and Raskolnikov commit murder? Two, punishment. How are James and Raskolnikov tortured for their actions? And lastly, Three. Redemption. How can we save ourselves, find self-respect, peace, and even happiness amongst our transgressions? <laughs>